Good morning, everybody. Starting our day off here, cleaning up this trailer. We just delivered our last two machines on this load. So we're gonna put all these ramps away. These ramps get stored on the side of the trailer here. I'll quickly show you what we're doing and then we're gonna get going. So there's two ramps in there already. That's for the second floor. There's actually a second floor inside this trailer. I'm gonna put these two ramps back in there and secure them. And I just have to clean up the inside of this trailer. There's a bunch of equipment and straps and stuff that I need to organize and put neatly at the front. And then we're heading down to Calgary. The Big Rig Expo is tomorrow. It was June 22nd, so by the time you watch this, it's already over, but uh, I'm hoping it was a lot of fun. We'll see. I'm not too sure what to expect when I get there. We're going to find out together. I hope you guys tune in on tomorrow's video for the Big Rig Expo. Uh, it's a job fair as far as I know. And we are looking for drivers to do exactly this. Owner operators from Western Canada, Alberta, BC, that will be running Western Canada and Western US doing this in our motorsport division. So it's a little bit of extra work, but it's good for you. I enjoy it. It gets you out of your seat and gets your heart pumping just a little bit, you know, because we sit all day, right? And I always say your body is not designed to idle, just like a diesel engine. So it's nice when you make a delivery, get out of your truck, get moving a little bit, set up some ramps. Like I said, there's a second floor. Sometimes you got to set up ramps for that as well. It's not too much work, not too much work. The, the ramps are a little bit heavy, yeah, but uh, as long as you have the right technique, it's actually not that hard at all. And it doesn't take that long. Anyways, that's what we're doing out in Calgary tomorrow. We're uh, seeing if any of you guys out there with a truck would like to move your truck onto our fleet and help us out with our motorsports. All cleaned up, ready to go. Shout out to Jesse over there. Watches my videos and uh, came and said hi to me. He works here. <laughs> nice to meet you, man. Let's... Roll out. We can go around the building here and get back to the road. There is a Timmy's in town. I just don't know if I'm going to be able to get parking nearby. That's a little bit sketchy. <laughs> I do see loads of Cameron on there, though. He's got something over there. The top ones are just sort of rolling around every now and then. <laughs> Tell you what, log trucking. Log trucking is a whole different thing. It's a whole different beast. So Tim Hortons is just here around the corner and I, I don't know if I'm gonna get a parking in there. I hope so. Oh, I might actually, yeah, them. oh, I don't know. Okay, yeah, there's a parking spot there for me, as long as no one else takes it. As long as no one else takes it, we got a spot. Turn right, right in here. Nice, everybody left Continue just in time. For 203 kilometers. No, 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 Karen, we're gonna go get Timmy's. Yes, perfect timing. One hour parking here. Okay, well, it's not gonna take me one hour, I hope. You never know, some Tim Hortons, it might take an hour to get your coffee. And then they'll get it wrong. Come on. Why, Tim? What have you done to us, Tim Hortons? What? Traitors. Yet yeah, we still come and buy your coffee. I, I honestly don't know their secret. And it's true. They're the least Canadian business in Canada. Okay, maybe not the least. You know what I mean, though. I'm being a little bit hyperbolic or a little bit exaggerated. But they're not owned by Canadians. 
And if you go to a Tim Hortons, it's definitely like, it's definitely an experience. Is it just me? Because everywhere I go across the country, and they'll take forever to get you your order, and over half the time they get it wrong. And then when you go and ask them to fix it, they don't know what you're talking about. Whatever. Here we are, I still give them my money, right? Why? Why? I don't know. I don't know, I have a problem. I have a problem. We're on our way out of town. We got a full day of driving ahead of us. So I've just posted those uh, reminder clips onto YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok. Hopefully you guys saw them all in time so that if you are in the Calgary area, you are able to come to the expo and say hi. I hope to meet a whole bunch of you there. These videos on YouTube are my like full length videos. They go up a little later, about a week later, because it takes more time to put them together and render them and compress them and upload them and edit them, get the thumbnail ready, you know. But if you follow me on any of those other platforms like Instagram, or if you have a TikTok, I know some people don't like TikTok. Uh, I have one because I'm a cool old person, I guess. You can follow me there too. Uh, all the links to my social media are always down below each and every one of my videos. My mailing address is there as well too. You, I've often been asked for that. Uh, info about my truck, where I get my music from, anything. All of these questions that I keep getting asked in my comment section, just before you ask the question, go down below into my description the answer is probably there. That's where you can find me on Facebook and social media as well there. So, uh, find me on these other platforms. You can sometimes get a sneak peek into what's coming in future vlogs. Oh, that camper's in a hurry. Usually they're the ones going slow taking pictures every 10 seconds. Columbia is very clever. They think they are anyways. I would have to agree, they are. They put the brake check here in Kamloops, heading back towards Calgary, east, right at the scale. Thinking, right? Now they can watch us do our brake check. Make sure we actually get out of our truck and check our brakes. Unlike those other ones, like a lot of them have cameras there. Some of them don't. But here they put it, like there's the scale right across. The road there going the other direction. In our scale, this guy just drove in front of it there. Going this way is right there. 
and it's open. They can literally watch us to make sure we do our brake check. So I'm finished doing mine now. They should have seen me do it. Let's roll over the scale and continue east. Three 
valley gap I was talking about before. Once you see it, you know you see it, right? There's that resort or whatever that is down there. I, I'd like to stop there one day, but I don't think they got truck parking. I guess I'll have to make sure I stop in there when we ever come out here on vacation. I don't know what that is. It looks like this big resort castle thing. I remember once we had to stop on the road here because rocks were falling off this cliff off to our right. There's like a little rock slide that came onto the highway right in front of us. Good times. I was driving that Western Star 5700 then. So that was probably about six, seven years ago. Three Valley Gap. This is it here. See, no truck parking. But I guess we can park on the right here. Doesn't say no parking there. Oh, they got Ghost Town. Interesting, it's a huge thing. Maybe it's like a heritage site or something. Old gold mining town, I don't know. But it's always a distinct landmark when you're coming through here. is Subway where you are. I'm here in British Columbia right now. We stopped in Golden. I went in to get a meal in Subway. I want to ask you, so this is a foot long Italian herb and cheese, chicken bacon ranch. Got some cookies along with that to make it a meal and a Pepsi. $22.50. One person, one meal. I'm going to convert that to American. So, twenty-two fifty CAD to USD. That's sixteen dollars forty-three cents US. So, where are you guys located in the world where there's a subway? How much is the regular meal there? In the US, are your meals usually around sixteen dollars, sixteen fifty? Twenty-two fifty here. I thought that was a little bit steep. It sounds a lot better when I say it in US dollars, though sixteen fifty. Still, I think uh, one person should eat for under $15. Canadian, like, one person should eat for $10 American. What do you think? Is it just me? Has it always been that high? I mean, everything keeps going up, obviously. I'm just trying to keep track of how fast everything is going up. Is it, like, it feels like it's out of control for me, but maybe I'm just exaggerating in my head? Is that normal? Let me know down below in the comment section. Make sure you let me know where that subway is where you're... Uh, what country you're in. I think they have Subway in other places around the world, right?
series. Something about these drivers that are coming from the Rocky Mountains back towards Calgary, maybe they all like drank from the same water or something. None of them are using their cruise control. Like they all keep passing me, all of these guys, they'll pass me and then they'll get in front of me and they'll all slow down, all of them. There's like 10 or 12 of them up, up in front of that white SUV in front of me yet. Uh, you can't really see because of the lens. There's like 15 of them and they'll all speed up together, blow past me and then, I'll, then they'll get in front of me. They'll all slow down in a line and then I'll pass them all. And then two minutes later, they all come flying past me again, do it all over again. Strangest thing. Irritating. Irritating as heck. I've been on cruise this whole time. I've been maintaining my speed for the last like two hours. Why does everybody keep speeding up and slowing down together? And they're not all like from the same place. There's like some American plates. I saw some Washington plates. I saw a California plate. A whole bunch of Alberta plates, obviously, BC plates. So you know that they're not, most likely not like buddy buddies to, running together. Here's another one of them. BC plates. I passed him three times. And he's passed me back again. Before we get to Calgary, guaranteed, they're all gonna slow down and I'm gonna have to pass them all again. Weird, I've never had this happen like with a big group like this before. That guy too. last two hours it's just been cat and mouse I don't I don't know why they're playing this giant game of leapfrog with me it's really bugging me <laughs> are they all playing a game that I'm not aware of try to annoy the trucker because it's working like, this guy's already slowing down oh here's someone new are you are you a, are you new to their little gang their little leapfrog game Come the brake lights. Oh yeah, there we go. Here's the first one beginning to slow down. I'm gonna be catching up to him right away. I'm gonna have to pass him again. It's the fourth time I'm gonna be passing this one. Like seriously, this many people, they all drive pretty nice cars, newer model cars. There's no way that every single one of them doesn't come equipped with cruise control. There's no way. I gotta get over, I gotta pass this guy. Hello again, my friend. I see you have lost your acceleration pedal. It's the one on the right. Cruise control, cruise. Cruise control is such a wonderful invention. Try it out, you'll love it. Well, I got this guy all upset now because he wanted to go fast. He caught up to me. Sorry, bud. It's only two lanes. Well, what's going on here? Oh yeah, I turned my cruise off when I was behind that guy. That's what's going on here. Okay, resume. Cruise control, you see? It's a godsend, it's amazing. I made it back here to Calgary, the Flying J, same one we were at the other night. In almost the exact same spot as well. So I dropped off that van trailer at our drop yard, which isn't too far from here. So I'm just bobtailing now. So tomorrow's the big day. The big expo day. I'm hoping it goes well. It seems like it's a pretty big thing from what I've heard, but I've never been there before. I guess we'll find out. Oh, there's my cue. I need to go to bed. It's about 12.30 at night right now, and I gotta get up around 7.30, I guess, and uh, start getting ready. I think what I'm gonna do from here is I'm just gonna take an Uber to the show. I'm not actually, my truck isn't entered in the show and shine or anything. I'm just going there to help uh, with uh, recruitment and uh, to hang out there for the day and also to well, see the expo, see what it's all about and to meet you guys primarily. 
like to see whoever uh, came out to hang out with us for the day and check it out. So my truck will stay here. I'll take an Uber, go there. I gotta be there for probably about, I'm thinking eight to nine o'clock, somewhere in there. Show starts at 10 a.m. Uh, so we've got a few things we gotta set up. We'll be there for the day. I think it goes till 7 p.m. And then I'll Uber back to the truck here and I'll probably go get my trailer that we loaded on, uh, what was it, Tuesday? That load I loaded in Edmonton, it's still waiting just around the corner at the same yard I dropped that uh, the dry van off at. We'll hook onto that and we'll start moving towards Manitoba then. But for now, I need to go to sleep. Thanks for joining me today, everybody. It was a scenic day again. It always is going through British Columbia. Beautiful province. But uh, yeah, we'll see you tomorrow for the Big Rig Expo. Tune in. I'll see you later.